Hi there, this is Joel, and I'm going to take you through a very quick tour of the Archivematica to Dataverse integration that we've done so far. Um, this is a local deployment that I've done. It's the um, core development is all pretty much done, but there are a few defects and so on, and, and the PR actually hasn't even finished code review yet. So this is pretty early stages, but it's um, it's mostly there, so it's a good time to provide a quick overview of how it all works. So first of all, this is uh, Dataverse. The Scholars Portal provides a hosted version of Dataverse um, to their universities in Ontario, and um, anyone can pretty much create an account. This is actually a, uh, a QA instance that they have set up for us, uh, well, for themselves and us. Um, and Within that, we've created a Dataverse called the Archivematica Test Dataverse. Um, basically, every Dataverse has a root Dataverse, and then you can create as many other Dataverses within that as you want, and, and you can nest them a fair bit. Um, so if we look at the Archivematica Test Dataverse, we can see that there are 15 data sets and three different Dataverses. Uh, and these are all of our various files, uh, sorry, uh, data sets, uh, and then we can go in and look at one. I'm going to look at this Bala one because I'm going to show what that looks like in Archivematica. Um, and you can see that it's got 16 different files um, and you can look at all of those. You notice some of these files uh, have this explore button and that's because they are tabular data. Uh, and Dataverse does some interesting things with those um, which I will uh, explain in, in a few minutes. Um, when we get there, uh, but for now, this is pretty much what it looks like when you after you've uploaded the thing. Dataverse also has a fair bit of metadata, and we'll see where that all comes through. They've got a good crosswalk that maps this to DDI and Dublin Core and a couple of other metadata schemas, um, and it does support versions. Um, we're not too worried about that for the moment. Um, the only other thing I'll show here is uh, so we've got an Archivematica. Uh, tester account set up and that account has its own um, generates its own API token uh, much the way you can in Archivematica. Uh, so that then gets put into the storage service so uh, this is how we connect to a Dataverse. First of all we have uh, we've got our local file space but we also have a Dataverse space set up and that Dataverse space um, basically it uses this new access protocol called Dataverse and there's the path to the storage and the staging path is the same. Um, the interesting bits are here. The host is provided so this is the basic URL to that um, Dataverse uh, that I was showing you. Uh, the API key that's from my Archivematica test user and then we've got agent name, agent type and agent identifier uh, and all of those are going to be used um, and put into an agent's file, a JSON file, uh, which is then used later to when we create our METs um, to show some of the work that Dataverse has done in produce, um, producing this data set. So that's the space and then if you look at the locations uh, for Dataverse right now all we're really doing is transfer source locations. So this is the example that I'll show and you can see that um, it's a transfer source, this is my pipeline, and then the interesting bit here is this relative path. So basically what this location is doing is behind the scenes the storage service is going to connect to Dataverse using the Dataverse API. And it's going to do that um, using two different parameters. Now there are a number of different parameters you could, there are many more than that that can be sent to the Dataverse API. Uh, but we enable two sort of through the front end of Archivematica um, in the storage service this way. So one is just the query path, uh, and the other is subtree. So subtree is the parameter name for um, a um, for a Dataverse, for a specific Dataverse. If this was blank, it would just show everything in the root Dataverse. Since it's got, so it got Archivematica, that is because if you look at our... Um, Archivematica test dataverse, you can see it here. Although the name, the description is Archivematica test dataverse, you can tell that the actual um, ID or name that um, uh, dataverse is using is just Archivematica. Um, and you can also see when you go and look at a particular um, data set, 
uh, oh, that's not actually what I want. Um, I wanted to show you the query. So if I go here and I do um, Bala, you can see there's our Q parameter, um, which is you know what maps to this. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could pretty much um, um, you know I can mimic uh, the search I'm doing here with, and set up different locations here. Uh, and if there were lots and lots of data sets, you might want to set up a number of different locations. Uh, given that Dataverse is an object store and it's not a directory structure, it's not great for uh, sort of moving hierarchical, hierarchically through a, a, a bunch of directories. Um, it's more sort of search based. Um, so just to show you what that looks like, um, we come into Archivematica. We're going to pick this new Dataverse transfer type. And I'm going to go to my transfer source, and I'm going to pick this Bala dataset, and I'm going to call it Bala2 because I did one earlier today. And I'm not going to approve it automatically just so I can show you what the transfer looks like when we first get it. Uh, this will take a minute perhaps because it's not a small data set. Um, and I'll just kind of come back to my earlier point in the um, uh, in the Bala data set, um, oh, isn't that interesting? I see it's oh, here. Here it is. It's showing me all sorts of things. Um, so here's the actual data set. Um, so we have 16 different files, but we also have several of those files are tab files. And what Dataverse does for each of those is uh, it actually goes and says, "Oh, this is tied to their data." Uh, and it creates some derivatives uh, for other formats so that you can um, you potentially use this with other software. Uh, and it also um, creates a, um, a DDI.xml metadata file for a tabular file uh, that describes um, what's in that tabular data. Um, so those aren't all listed here right at the front end, but they are there. They were generated uh, when this data set was published. So if we go into Archivematica, oh, we can see approved Dataverse transfer, so awaiting decision, so that means it's ready. So before I um, show you that, I want to show you. So this is my active transfers, Dataverse transfers um, volume, and you can see that I've got a new data set there, Bala2. So uh, now we can see that actually there's more than 16 files here. And that's so that's basically because what the storage service is doing is it's going and retrieve, um, it's going to the um, Dataverse API. And what Dataverse is actually doing is for each of those tabular data sets, it's returning a zip file that includes, so if you take this as an example, PA cases Australia, you've actually got a few files here. The tab file was the original file. You've also got a CSV um, derivative, and you've got a DDI XML, a metadata file that describes what's in the tabular data. Um, so when you first, when you use the API, what you're first getting is a, uh, a zip file. The storage service is actually extract, um, extracting that zip file and getting rid of the original zip from Dataverse. And the reason it's doing that is we didn't want to get um, confused later on when you have extract packages as a microservice with other zip files. So if this data set doesn't have any, but if the data set did have um, zip files that weren't part of a um, you know, a tabular data set, like a, what, what they call on the Dataverse lingo, a bundle, uh, then you'd see that, that zip file here. So it's, it's only the ones that are coming through that we know are actually, you know, quote unquote bundles from Dataverse that get unpacked by the storage service um, and shown here. And we can kind of verify all that with the, uh, you'll see there's a metadata directory there. We look at that. We'll see two things in here. So we see a, an agents.json file and a dataset.json file. So if you look at the agents one, 
you can see um, basically the exact same fields um, that we had in our um, in our space. So the agent name, agent type, agent identifier um, is all there. Um, so that's the agent info that'll get. So we the reason we have that is because we're going to ascribe those derivatives that got created for the data set. We're going to ascribe those to the um, Dataverse agent. Uh, and then so we also get this data set dot json uh, file this we get directly from Dataverse and it's got a full listing of every single file and a whole bunch of metadata about the file and it also includes checksums for the uh, for each file um, so it's you know a nice thorough exhaustive thing and they the Dataverse team have a good crosswalk that show which of these things, how they map to um, to DDI, what maps to Dublin Core, and a couple of other uh, different um, common schemas. Um, so um, I'm thinking of updating our, our METS data mapping to um, to use that to show how we're mapping some of the which things get these get mapped into to, to which uh, METS fields. Uh, pretty much, I already have it on the wiki, but it's it's not quite exhaustive. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the metadata file we can now. So that just basically, I wanted to show you what it, what the transfer looks like. Um, basically, before we do anything within the archive mannequin pipeline itself, uh, but you can see a little bit of stuff has gone on there in the storage service to retrieve that. Um, so now we'll approve it, and I've got this configuration set up to pretty much do everything automatically. Um, so uh, it should go through this relatively quickly. Um, you know, the one thing I'll draw out here, so this convert dataverse structure, this is uh, one of our, one of the key microservices, um, and that is basically taking all of the stuff from datasets.json and transforming it in various ways. And I, I think, if I'm correct, this is the stage where we are actually checking the checksums. Um, and we haven't actually done that as part of a um, into a um, we haven't put the checksums into a file so the standard um, checksum microservice isn't actually doing anything so I just highlight because that's something we might want to improve in future take those MD5s and create a, um, a file out of them uh, and then that way you'd show that um, verifying those checksums as part of the standard verify metadata directory checksums. Um, not sure about that, but that's a, a an interesting point we might want to cover at some point. Um, what else? Most of the rest of this is relatively straightforward, although you do get to the PARS Dataverse METS XML, um, which is really uh, doing that to create your uh, the METS for the transfer. So. If I got this straight, we're gonna. Uh, I guess that's the METS for the SIP. So we're gonna end up with um, three different METS files. A METS file created here that describes what we got from Dataverse directly. Uh, a METS that shows what went on in the transfer process, and then our final eight METS um, is produced here. And it's not showing anything Dataverse specific, but it's obviously generating it from those previous things that it created. Um, so there we can see Bala 2 uh, and if I download that we can have a quick look at it um, so there it is we have um, our We have our, um, so this is what I would call the data, I don't the naming of these is not all that clear because we've got a mets.xml here, but I think that we could we could call this our Dataverse mets. This is what's describing what actually came from Dataverse. Um, and you can see the various files, and you can see you've got originals here, 
Um, but you also have doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, our metadata ones and where's our derivatives? Ah, yeah, and then your derivatives. So you can see you've got our data um, and tab and so on. These that are, ah, so I see. So, yeah, what they had done is they uploaded a CSV file and then they created a derivative, which is the tab. I think I might have described that the other way around um, when I was looking at a dataverse, but you get the basic idea. Um, and then, yeah, there's all of our files and our final Mets for the Ape. And uh, we all. What was the name? I just wanted to show you. Uh, I'm going to take our agent name and search for that. And then you can see we have our... Um, we have both um, the Archivematica agent doing things, and then we, but we also have the, um, the Dataverse agent doing things. Uh, and trying to describe how all the Mets are structured in a screencast is probably not super helpful, so uh, I'll leave that for the moment. Um, and I'm going to update the the, the Dataverse page in, the, in our wiki with more info on um, how all this works. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. Um, I will speak to you later.